All right, so now we're gonna talk about um, choosing the proper UV gel. We're gonna talk about the light and lamps, the gel polish, and maintenance and removal. And then that is that for this chapter, and we are officially done with the nail chapter. So know that when you choose the proper UV gels, there's many different gels to choose, but there's a few guidelines you wanna be aware of. You wanna be mindful that if the client has flat fingernails, more building will be needed to create that arch that we see in the nail or the curve. Uh, so if you look at my nail, I don't really have a, an arch that is really even there. My nails are decently flat. If you were gonna use uh, one of my nails as a practice thing, you'd actually wanna build that arch. So my nails would be a good um, you know, basically model for that. So that's where I always say, if you have a, a big class, find someone who has a very flat nail and practice this on, because this is a good skill to have. The building um, will be easiest done with a thicker UV um, building gel. So if you have a client with very, very, very flat nails, you want to choose a thick UV building gel. If the client has fingernails that have an arch and curve, you would like a self-leveling gel because that would be your best option. Your self-leveling gel is not going to you know, build up like the um, thicker ones will. It will kind of fall into place and collapse. So choose a self-leveling gel that you prefer, either a medium viscosity or a thick viscosity. And if your client repeatedly returns to the salon at broken enhancements, then a gel that uses fiberglass may be the best uh, product for them. So now onto the um, UV light units and lamps. So what is the difference between a UV lamp and UV light unit? A UV lamp, also known as a UV light bulb, is a special bulb that emits UV light to cure UV gel nail enhancements. This will be on your test. There are a number of different lamps that are used to cure UV gels. There are four watt, six watt, seven watt, eight watt, and nine watt lamps. So any one of those questions is fair game for your test. Um, when I make questions for the exam, I sometimes like to do a fun one and trip you guys up and I might include a crazy number or a number that's in between it. So make sure you're actually reading carefully because that really makes you um, you know, think hard, especially if you get the question wrong and then you want to go back and figure out like, oh wait, where was the, the number wrong? So I've done it once where I said, uh, I said uh, which one is not um, one of the wattages? And I th think I did something like um, four, six, eight, and I said um, 12, and uh, 12 was not an answer. Um, so now that we know that a UV lamp, also known as UV light bulb, is a special um, bulb, the UV light unit, also known as UV light, is a specialized electronic device that powers and controls UV lamps to cure UV gel nail enhancements. Light units may look similar at first, but there are big differences. The differences include the number of lamps in the unit, the distance the lamps are from the bottom of the unit, and the size of the unit. These factors affect the curing power of the unit. The names of light units typically indicate the number of lamps inside the light unit manipulated, I mean multiplied by the wattage of the lamps that are used. Know that unit wattage is a measure of how much electricity the lamp consumes, almost like miles per gallon. So if you have a car, like let's say your Corvette um, uses a ton of gas per mileage where you know my um, beat up Toyota Corolla may have a slower absorption um, mileage, so it will last a little bit longer. That's a good way to remember that. Um, miles per gallon does not tell you how fast your car can go, just as wattage does not indicate how much UV light a lamp will produce. So think about it like this, if um, I have you know, my friend's Corvette and I'm driving my beat up uh, car, my beat up car, if I floor it, it can definitely go to 140 miles an hour where that Corvette can go just the same uh, miles per hour. So um, obviously not to condone that kind of behavior, but like think about it, if you have two cars and you're testing it, they're all gonna go to the same speed and there's different factors that influence it. Um, however, that, that car that um, uses gasoline quicker is gonna burn out a lot quicker than my car would if it has a more steady rate of usage. Um, so for example, if a unit has four lamps in it and each lamp is nine watts, the unit is called a 36 light unit. Think of it out like this, four times nine, that's 36. Likewise, if the light unit only has three lamps and each lamp is nine watts, the unit is called a 27 watt light unit. Wattage does not indicate how much UV light a UV light will admit. UV gel light units are designed to produce the correct amount of UV light needed to properly cure UV gel nail enhancement products. UV gels are usually packaged in small opaque pots or squeeze bottle tubes to protect them from UV light. UV light is actually invisible to the naked eye. We can't see UV light. I know if you think of the tanning bed having a special light on it, you're just seeing the visible part of the light spectrum. You're not actually seeing the UV light. 
Um, also know that both true color and full spectrum lamps emit a significant amount of UV light. So like the lights that we have up here do emit a UV light. If the UV gel product is exposed to these types of ceiling or table lamps, the product shelf life may be shortened, causing the product to harden in the container, like I've said before. If I take that UV gel and I open that polish and it's exposed to the um, air, it's going to harden that bottle and it'll be ruined. Um, also know that depending on their uh, circuitry, different lamps produce greatly uh, different, differing amounts of UV light. This is referred to the UV lamp intensity or concentration. The intensity will vary from one light unit to the next and is more important than rating a UV light based on wattage. So for these reasons, it's important to use UV lamp that is designed for the selected UV gel product. If your uh, brand has one that's very intense, you want to use that specific um, unit. You don't want to use another one that is a lot less in intensity. Higher intensity generally is better. It means they're going to cure quicker and cure stronger. You also want to know um, that UV lamps will stay blue for years. But after a few months, they may produce too little light. UV light, so if they're producing too little light, that's too little light to properly harden and cure the enhancement. Typically, you want to change them two to three times per year, depending on the frequency of use. If they are not changed regularly, gels may cure inadequately. And that's kind of like one of the first signs that you might want to change your lamp. If the gel is taking a lot longer to cure or it's not working correctly, that's a sure um, sign that you want to change the bulb out into a fresh one. If you're using the lamp frequently, if you're doing like you're a nail artist and you're using um, UV uh, manicures daily, you're gonna get probably even shorter and I would even suggest that you would have to change uh, your UV lamps frequently. Um, also know that if they don't cure um, correctly, the oligomers and additional chemicals are not hardened and this can cause service breakdown skin irritation, and product sensitivity, so not good. Also know that the heat um, from the chemical reaction caused when the UV gels cure can make some clients uncomfortable. This heat can be controlled slowly by inserting the hand into the UV lamp. This will help to slow the gel reaction and generate less heat. The heat is a result of an exothermic reaction of the gel as each bond of the polymer is created. The more bonds that are formed when the gel cures, the more heat that is generated. In addition, the more bonds that are created when the gel polymerizes, the stronger the gel will be. So think about it like this. If you form a bond, you want more bonds. The more bonds, the harder the nail, the longer lasting the nail will be. If you have, um, think about it like this. That exothermic reaction, just like the exothermic permit, generates heat. Heat is a part of the chemical process. If you have many bonds being formed at once, it's going to feel very intense. But if you have the reaction that is produced, you know, slow and steady, you're still getting, you know, those many bonds, it's going to, you know, go up and then it, you know, gently goes down after it's done. It's not like a sharp, like, whoop, increase. Also know that the most common UV lamp on the market is a 9 watt. Um, other are the 4 watt lamps, 6 watt lamps, and 7 watt lamps, and LED, which is the light emitting diode. Know that um, many of the UV gel systems use the 9 watt lamp. Most of the gels can be cured in any manufacturer's 9 watt lamp unit. A gel that has been specifically designed to cure in a 9 watt lamp unit may not be able to cure properly in a 4 watt light unit. The gel may become hard and cured in the 4 watt light unit, but it does not become as hard or cure completely. If the gel does not cure completely, it will crack, lift, and separate from the nail. It may not have a high shine and the client will not be pleased on the service and they will not come back. Know that this is similar to a monomer liquid and polymer powder system that has been applied with the incorrect mixing ratio. So kind of like linking the last, last chapter. Know that um, the light unit has much to do with the proper curing of the UV gels as a lamp. Not all light units are the same. The differences um, vary. For example, if two light units are similar in every other respect, but the light unit but light unit A has been constructed with UV lamps closer to the fingernail than light unit B, light unit A will have more curing potential because of the closer um, you know, space. If you have lamps that are you know, spaced apart in your unit, you're not going to cure quicker where if they're you know, spaced closely together and they're very close to the nail. You want to consult with your manufacturer um, or the uh, you know, rep, service rep to find the best for you. So now UV gel polish. UV gel polish has become a popular service to complement all gels and all their enhancement services. 
It's a relatively new system that evolved in the year 2000 with the emergence of new uh, chemistries that have become widely available to the beauty industry. The most popular UV gel polishes are highly pigmented, a factor which gives these systems the appearance of a traditional solvent-based nail lacquer. Also know that polishes are available in hundreds of shades, uh, much the same as traditional nail polish to suit every client. Wearing UV gel polishes instead of traditional nail lacquers does not offer great advantages. However, they are removed differently than traditional nail polish. One advantage of UV nail polishes is that they do not dry, they cure. Cure UV gel polish systems will not imprint or smudge if the client hits his or her, her hands while the nail lacquer is still drying. A second advantage is that the UV gel polish is not thicken over time because the solvent does not evaporate. Think about it when a client has her nails done in the salon and then she leaves it and she's trying to drive her car like this as her nails are drying. You don't get that with the UV gels. They actually don't smudge. Um, know that since the solvent does not evaporate in UV gel polish, a container of um, such polish will last a lot longer. Here's where it gets uh, tricky, where you remove other polishes with acetone and nail polish remover. Typically with UV gel polish, you have to file it off. And I know that sounds super scary and super intimidating. I remember having my rasp and I'm trying to help this one lady file her nails off when I was in school. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna shred her finger up. What if her nail comes off? Um, but no, you actually have to use a very abrasive and a very coarse file. Some of them even prefer to use an electric file, but I always say be careful with that because you can cause serious harm. Um, however, there are soakable UV gel polishes um, that can be removed by soaking the nails in acetone for five to 10 minutes to soften them and then take a stick and just kind of melt through them. That same plastic-like chemical that's in the UV gel is very similar to um, other, chemo uh, other plastics that are broken down from high content acetone. So just get a really high acetone, soak your nails in it, I always say go 10 minutes, you can even go longer. Keep doing soaks in it and eventually it will give way. If you throw enough stuff on the nail, something will give eventually. Um, also know that for UV gel maintenance and removal, they must be maintained um, regularly depending on how your client's nails grow. You wanna start your maintenance by using a medium grit abrasive file, which is 180 grit, to thin and shape the enhancement. You don't wanna damage natural nail plate, so be very careful on that. Before um, filing nail, you want to clean the nail with UV gel um, cleanser or isopropanol alcohol, 99% or better. This will take your oils off um, from the natural nail, any sebum residues. That is important to do because uh, if you have a nail oil, it's not going to allow your surface to come out properly and it can also be hazardous because if you're trying to file a slippery surface, you can accidentally go like that and then slice your client's uh, finger. Uh, so UV gel remover, there are two types of gel and each employs a different removal method. There's hard UV gels, also known as traditional UV gels. They cannot be removed with the solvent and must be filed off the natural nail to be removed. And there are soft UV gels, also known as soakable gels, and they are removed by soaking in acetone. It is important that you read and follow the manufacturer's directions before removing UV gel nails. So uh, when providing enhancement services, ask whether the client would like the enhancement to be easily removable. If the client wants easily removable enhancements, use soak off UV gel as the base coat, following the manufacturer's recommendations on the UV gel's application, and then perform the remainder of the service. Before the client leaves the salon, arrange a date for her to return to have the UV gels removed. And if you guys are interested in nail chemistry, um, this chapter is chemistry heavy, it's word heavy, and I try my best to like read a little bit and break it down. Um, because I know it does get really confusing. When you are in it and you are doing it, it is a lot more, um, it makes a lot more sense because you're practicing it more. We're hands-on learners. So I do apologize if this was a more of the boring section. I do my best with it because the method gets a little um, complex. Read uh, Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, second edition um, by My Lady. That is a book that is filled with this chemistry. Your services in here talk about the different types of UV gels. Um, and how to apply them. Know that uh, some systems recommend applying UV gel to four fingernails on one hand and then curing and then repeating this procedure on the other hand before applying and curing UV gel on the thumbnails. I guess part of that is when you're sticking your hands in, it's easier to go like this and then when they're all hardened and cured, you can just go like that and that will help that. Um, you'll also wanna make sure that during the procedure, keep the brush and UV gel away from sunlight UV gel lamps and full spectrum table lamps to prevent the gel from hardening. When the service is completed, store them away from all light sources. 
you always want to store your UV gels in a cabinet that is cool in a cool dark place and away from the light. Um, also know that um, when using tips with UV gels, you want to size the tip so that you can the curve of the tip matches the curve of the nail. If the curves do not match, um, the tip is spread too flat, then the tips could crack lengthwise down the center. So if you find the tip has cracked lengthwise on the center, you know that the curve of your tip was not matched to the curve of the fingernail. Also know that, um, yeah, it's kind of like a repeat on the different tones. There's all kinds of uh, methods, like there's UV gel maintenance, UV gel overforms. They have a lot of uh, interesting pictures in the section too. They talk about the uh, hard gel removal with the filing and the soft gel removal. So it's important to practice both. Make sure you um, focus on the types of gels are, that are on there. Focus on the inhibition layer, oligomer, what that means, photo initiator, all the glossary, all the vocabulary, and do some of the review questions. So with that being said, we are officially over with part five of the book, which is nail services. All of you deserve a very fancy cup of coffee. Enjoy that. When we come back, you're gonna be entering the last and final part of the book, part six. This is all of your business skills. And I know that some students cannot stand this chapter. I love this chapter because this will help you find a job, learn the um, important skills when on the job, and then you're gonna learn about the salon business or what I would refer to as our whole industry and the different areas that you can go in there. And then when we go over that last chapter, 32, I'm gonna leave it open for different careers because I want to inspire all of you with something special. So we're going to be covering chapters 30, 31, 32 in the next coming videos. Um, they're not super painful and I actually think they're really, really cool. And I'm going to give you some tips, um, me myself being a forensic psychologist, I'm going to give you quite a few tips that you can incorporate into your daily lives to make things easier for your test and life in general when you leave because I truly believe that teaching, it's more than just memorizing what's in the book. It's about the human experience and it's about learning from another individual. So you guys learning from me and then hopefully I can learn something from all of you so we can have a, a mutual learning process going on. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take a, a break if you're gonna um, watch us in one giant segment. And when you come back, please have your resumes ready because we're gonna be talking about chapter 30, Seeking Employment.